Sheriff, Sheriff, Sheriff. Sorry. Sorry. He just joined. Uh, who doesn't have data from yesterday? You can grab a USB stick and edit. Uh, also, you can ask questions to get some prizes. Also, I would like to encourage you to let uh, know your opinion about DevConf on Twitter and some blog articles and stuff. Also, you can vote and suggest uh, lightning talks in a big glass building, D section. <coughs> Please do that. And also, I would like to remind you that it's Sunday there will be context for cool prices. So thank you. Okay. So yeah, then good morning everybody again, and uh, welcome to the to the second part of uh, the IPA workshop. Um, which of you have been here yesterday in the in the first part? Okay, so quite a few. Um, the thing is, what, what we did yesterday in the first part is to set up the whole environment, um, which is actually required to go through all the modules here that are covered in, in, in the workshop. So, and since this is a real workshop where you guys are supposed to work instead of uh, us, <laughs> somehow, um, you actually have to have the environment available, um, as I said, in order to go through all the modules. So, so if, you, if you don't have it available, you can't do this kind of stuff. So um, what, I, what I propose now, um, for those who haven't been here yesterday, um, so we have some uh, USB sticks available, and if you want, um, who wasn't here yesterday? Uh, but you have, a, you have a machine with you? Okay. Well, so what you yeah exactly yeah. so what you can do is to um, to mount a USB stick on your on your local box um, then you find a workshop folder on the USB stick and underneath there's another folder called free IPA and this folder contains all the workshop uh, re re related content and um, so you will find there also this workshop uh, HTML file which is actually a overview about the workshop so and what we did yesterday is uh, as I said we went through uh, so module one and module two, but in order to, to finish the two modules here, you have to set up a Vagrant environment. So every, everything is completely based on, on, on Vagrant. What does it mean? Uh, there was another, oh, there was actually a section available here in the document as well called preparation. And here it's described how to set up the Vagrant environment on your box. In order to do that, ideally you have a Fedora machine with a libbeard <coughs> installed on it. And um, so then you have to install a Vagrant, the Vagrant libbeard plugin. It's, it's described here in, in, in the document. Um, in the next step, um, well, what is described here is that you have to clone a Git repository, but actually that's not necessary because the content is already available in the folder from the USB stick. No? So you do not have to, to clone this because, as I said, it's part of the USB stick. Um, oops. Um, yeah, then you have to prepare your environment so that uh, your local user you use to manage the Vagrant environment is actually able to manage it. In order to do that, you have to install a policy kit rules, uh, rule and you have to put your local user, whatever, whoever it is, into the Vagrant uh, user group and then have to restart the, the necessary services. And finally, um, fetch the Vagrant box. And the original idea was that you download the Vagrant box from my machine here in the front, but that is, this is not working because of uh, network w w restrictions. But what you can also do is to just uh, 
at the box from the USB stick again, no? because the box and so the image file is uh, available on the on the USB stick. It's uh, also part of the workshop folder. The image file it's like 400 something meg in, in, in size, and it, it's it's called libvirt.box. No? So then just run big run box add t share slash free IPA workshop and then the pass to the to the libvirt.box <coughs> file. And then you are almost uh, good to go. No? Then uh, some some minor additional steps are required. So, for example, um, to, to put the virtual machine name names here into your uh, etc host file, so that you can later on also SSH into the uh, into the virtual machine boxes and so on and so forth. No? So, and what 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 you have at that point in time is um, uh, a Vagrant box that has been imported into your machine, and uh, when you then fire up the Vagrant environment with uh, Vagrant up, uh, you will find a server machine, a replica machine, and a client machine um, available on your on your local on your local box. Yeah. So, and and that's actually the environment we are we are working with in this workshop. Yeah. The, the people who were here already yesterday. Uh, hopefully, most of them completed this uh, these state, uh, steps, and um, yeah, that's how the environment look, looks like. Um, so, when you have the environment up and running, you can go to the first module that is installing the server, which is uh, described here. Yeah. So, IPA server install with the uh, necessary options. Um, make sure you run this command on the server, yeah? so you can connect to the server by running vagrant as h server. Um, you have to answer some, some questions from the, from the I in installer and then it, it goes through the whole installation which uh, takes like, how long was it yesterday? 10 minutes, maybe? Maybe yeah. less. Yeah, maybe less than, than 10 minutes. Um, yeah, then the server is up and running, hopefully, after a few minutes. And then in the second module, <coughs> you are supposed to install the client machine, which is uh, then uh, enrolled into the free IPA domain. Uh, so you can just um, connect to the client again by running Vagrant as the client, um, and then execute the client installation program called IPA client install dash dash mkd or home dear option uh, again. It, it makes it, it ensures that when a when somebody logs in who doesn't have a home directory available, the home directory is created on the fly automatically you know, without the need to do anything. You know. um, that's, that's the option. You know. uh, so, it, so the IPA client install program, uh, if the server has been configured properly already, it, it receives all the necessary information from, from, from DNS. So, it, so what it does, it, it, it does a DNS dis discovery and then it finds out which Kerberos VM the client has to use, which, uh, which IPA server the client has to use, and so on and so forth. So there is no need to add all those options to the, to the client installer program. It's all done automatically by, by DNS, this discovery. You can, of course, you can pass those options to the program, to the client program, but um, it has some, some downsides. <coughs> sides. Now that's why, why I would really recommend to uh, properly set up your, your, your DNS on the server, which happens automatically if you do it correct, and then you can just run the client installer without any additional options. Okay, and that's where we uh, stopped yesterday. <clears throat> so, um, before we continue now with the third module, which is about user management and uh, uh, user authentication based on, on Kerberos. For those who have been here yesterday, any, any questions regarding what we did yesterday? Anybody with bad dreams about IPA last night or Vagrant even? Nobody? That's good. Okay. Um, okay, so, um, Module three, that, that's what we are going to talk about now. Um, we finished the installation yesterday, and um, what I've showed you is that, uh, wait, so, 
So this is a server. The, the installation finished successfully and you was able to authenticate as admin user, for example. No? So that, that, that's where, where I stopped yesterday. I think, no? So I went, went k init admin. Admin is a user that has been created yesterday as part of the installation process. You're asking for a Kerberos uh, a TGT. No? This is a ticket which is uh, usually used when you initially log in into a system and then you can use this ticket to, to request other service related tickets later on in order to do a real single sign on no? so that you can authenticate against different hosts and services without the need to, to type in your password again. It's all done <coughs> uh, tr transparently for you in the background and the TGT which is Use, uh, which, is, uh, uh, um, which is requested here, that's the ticket which is actually used for all this magic that, that happens automatically. So um, here we, we stopped yesterday. Um, so what you can do to now create your first users um, or groups or put users into the groups you, you just created, uh, you can either log into the web interface I told uh, you yesterday, a uh, part of the installation is also the setup of a web interface. So you can point your browser uh, to this address here, HTTPS uh, server IPA uh, demo local, and then you can log in with the uh, with admin account. Um, that's one option. Or you can, uh, of course, uh, also use the, the command line tool. No, I told you yesterday the command line tool is called IPA. It's ba so it's completely, uh, completely uh, based on 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 uh, on modules, so and uh, if you call IPA with a user module, you can create a user account, for example, mm -hmm. or a, a, a group. So just to give you an idea, that's the web interface. Uh, as you can see, I pointed my browser to server IPA demo local, the machine we set up yesterday. I can log log in as uh, admin. Uh, since since my, 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 my local workstation where I have the, the browser running is not part of the IPA domain, uh, I have to type in my, my password. Now, if it would be part of the domain, then uh, the, and if I would have configured my browser for Kerberos authentication, there would be no need to, to authenticate with the, with the password. Um, so that's the user interface, uh, the web interface. <coughs> um, if you want, you can, can go through it a bit no, and explore it. <laughs> No, so you can create users here. No, that, that's part of the, of the module three. You're supposed to go through in a minute or in a few minutes, let's say. Um, you can create user groups here. And um, yeah, just take a look at the, at the web interface. Uh, on, on the other side, you can also use, uh, as I just said, the command line tool. Um, so if you run IPA user, for example, and make use out of the bash completion, then you see there are a lot of different modules available, and in order to set up a new user, you can just call IPA user add, um, and then either you pass the necessary option to the IPA tool, so username, first name, last name, and things like, like that, or you just uh, press enter, and then the tool asks you for the necessary options. Um, one remark at that point in time, um, I, so I f saw there was one mistake in the setup instructions we used yesterday. Let me point you to that. Um, uh, okay. Here. Yesterday, I asked you to install Vagrant and Vagrant Libbeard on your workstation machine, on your physical workstation machine here. And in, in addition to that, also to in, uh, install bash completion. But that's, of course, wrong. Uh, you don't need bash completion on your physical box. You need the bash completion package inside of the VMs, uh, not on the physical box. No. So. Um, uh, probably you can't 
install this package now anymore from, from, your, from your virtual machines because you don't have external network access from the, from the VMs. But what you can do in order to use um, uh, the bash completion, which is quite convenient because the IPA command line tool it has, as I said, a lot of sub-modules, so, and it's really helpful to have bash completion available. Just manually source the bash completion file here in the VM. Uh, that, um, source it from the command line and then bash completion is available as I have just shown. Uh, oh, group. Oops. And so on and so forth. Uh, and you can do that on the replica machine later on as well and on the, on the client uh, too. Okay, so that was just a side note. Um, Okay, so I would say now go through module three, just like we did yesterday. So you have plenty of time to go through the module, try to set up uh, a user account. Uh, part of the module now is uh, that you are uh, that you set up uh, two user accounts, Alice and 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 Bob, I think, and then um, you are asked to put those no, one of those accounts into a group which is called sysadmin, and um, I leave it up to you. If you use the command line or if you, if you use the web interface, it's up to you. Okay? Good. Then give it a try, and uh, if you have uh, problems with the setup, let us know. Uh, one more question. The, the, the web interface, uh, is everybody able to, to connect to the web interface or do you have any, any problems to connect no, to it? it's working somehow. It, it's working or it's not? It's something to find it really because when I try to add a user group, it shows me a window like this with unknown error. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, works works for me. So when you when you when you use the command line, so let's say you authenticate as, as admin, okay, in the admins, type in your password, you run IPA user app, you also see a, uh, an issue.
Yeah, what, what did you mention? What did you mean? Might be the problem. I'm pretty sure you put the right button. So uh, every machine is using one, one gig of memory, but it's somehow sharing memory pages. So That's the most important. <laughs> okay, so seems to be fixed. Um,
Okay, so let me let me just quickly show you what you have been supposed to do. I use the command line, so user add, uh, IPA user add. Oh, first make sure you have a valid uh, Kerberos ticket. <coughs> uh, IPA user add first na oops, first name um, Bob <coughs> last name Bob. No. Bob last, and the actual login name is Bob. Oops. It's actually it's called just last. And now, as you can see, the user account is created. So it, it uses some 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 defaults. No? For example, default login shell. You can you can define another one if you want. Uh, if you're curious uh, where all the default settings are defined, you can run. Um, for example, IPA config show, and then you see the default shell that is used for, for every user, and if you want to change it to a different one, then you can define it there. Um, a user ID has been created on the fly. Uh, group ID has also been created. Um, the, the user is automatically part of the IPA users <coughs> uh, group, which is kind of a default group that is uh, 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 available by, by, yeah, by default after the, the installation. Um, yeah, that's basically it. No? And um, so at this point in time, as you can see, a Kerberos principle for this user account has been created as, as well, but it does not have a password so far. No? So the password flag is, uh, is set to, to false. Um, so if you want to set a password for the user as admin, for example, run IPA password Bob, give a password, what? <clears throat> and then the user has a password set. And if you run I IPA user oops, user show Bob, uh, you can now see that the user has a password configured. You can authenticate as Bob. Oops, sorry. As Bob, type in the password, and then you are forced to change it with the first login. So you have changed it, you received a, a, a TGT for the user Bob, and you can now log in to a different machine. Uh, should have used the full, fully qualified domain name, of course. Ah, Hanks. So it, it, it took a while, but finally it, it finished to connect to the, to the client machine. And uh, as you have uh, probably seen, I did not type in a password. So the authentication was now uh, done based on, on Kerberos. And if you log out again and check your Kerberos credential cache, you can see that you, at this point in time, not just have a Kerberos TGT, but also a service ticket for the host uh, you have been connecting to. No, and that all happened automatically in the, in, in, in the background. So example for a single sign-on with a user you, you just created. Um, so the, the, the same can be done with the, with the web uh, UI, of course, as, as, as well. So there was one note here uh, in the setup, in, uh, actually in the, in the module instruction. Uh, you have probably seen that. Yeah. Thank you. 
users are always forced to, to change their, their, their password with the initial login. Yeah. Yes. You just said the password client is an admin. Yeah. So an admin you have a password you get from the user, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's for, I mean, it's... When, for example, when the user is created in uh, Active Directory, which is uh, connecting to IP server, it's behavior the same. When I'm creating users in Active Directory, where my IP server is connected, well, that, that is a different kind of setup. Now, if you use AD users, let's say you have, have set up a trust to an AD uh, domain or complete AD forest, then uh, you, you don't use the accounts from the, from the IDM side because the account lives on the AD side and you use uh, the, the, the accounts stored there. So then, that, that, then that, that's a completely different behavior. That's again. It's, it's, it's again another situation. You are doing some synchronization, oh, yeah. and then the user has been already created. Yeah. So, so we, we you, you don't need yeah. to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I just wanted to mention that if you connect to the web interface for the first time, you've probably seen a, a warning that the certificate is not trusted. <coughs> Um, by a web browser. That's simply because yesterday when we set up the server, we used the default uh, setup option regarding the, the certificate authority, which is part of the uh, whole setup. And um, so the, the default option is that IPA uh, creates uh, an internal certificate authority as a, as a root CA. So what does it mean? Root CA means that the CA certificate is uh, self-signed. So it's not signed by another a certificate authority, um, but it's it's, it's self-signed. So and um, that that's the reason why why you got this uh, this this warning message because of course the doc tag CA which you set up yesterday the, the the certificate of the CA is not part of your of your web browser, so it's not trusted, and, and that's that's why you received the warning. So there are d different set uh, or other setup options available as as, as well. You could also uh, say that the doc tag should be subordinate to another CA, so an external one or to an, uh, to an ex um, internal or external one, or you can completely uh, leave out the, C uh, the CA setup and then you have the requirement to go always to another CA in order to receive certificates. But what, what I would recommend, and that's, I would say, the most common setup, is uh, to set up doc tag and have the DocTech uh, CA certificate signed by, uh, by another uh, certificate which is already trusted into your, uh, in, your, in your enterprise environment. Uh, and that, that, that's the most common setup. Um, okay, so um, this was module two, uh, sorry, three. Um, so the next, the next module, it's about uh, host based access control. Uh, I already briefly explained what, what it means, uh, or what, what host based access control means uh, in the context of, of IPA. So, by, by default, <coughs> access is allowed for everybody um, to every host and to every service running on the, on the different hosts. No? That's what you have seen in the last module as, as well. No? So, if you SSH from the server, as Bob, to the client that was working out of the box uh, without the need to, to configure anything. And the reason for that is the reason for that is that there was a default host base as host base access control rule available which is called a low all and probably everybody can guess what it does. <laughs> Uh, so it, it, it's the rule that is responsible that every access is allowed for every user to every host to every service running on the host. No? So if you would disable this rule, no access would be, would be possible at, at, at all. And that's what you are actually supposed to do in the, in the next module. No? So the idea here is that you disable the allow, the allow all rule. No? That, that's easily possible. No? So you can just run... 
IPA, HBAC, rule disable, allow all. And now it's, it's, it's disabled, no? so no access would be possible to any host for any user now. And I um, can enable it again. So, and in such a case, what you have to do in order to, let's say, SSH from one host to, to another host is uh, to set up a proper host based access rule. And that's what, what you are supposed to do here. No? So you set up a rule call, uh, called uh, this admin web servers. Um, you assign a host group to the rule. So the host group is also something that uh, has to be created. So a host group is just a group of hosts. No? So you can, can, um, can um, uh, uh, use groups and put, uh, sorry, can uh, use uh, hosts and um, put those hosts into a, a group and instead of referring to a single host, you can then just refer to the, to, the, to the group and then it's much, much easier instead of just referring to various hosts. No? And then you create a, a, a user group called sysadmin no? and you put in Alice to this group and you assign this group also to the uh, host-based access control rule. And then finally, in the next step, you have, uh, you have to define which services are assigned to this, uh, this admin web service rule. So, and you could specify a specific service here. So, for instance, SSHD, you know, if you just want to allow uh, the access to the SSHD uh, service, in our case, we just say access to every single service is allowed for the users, which are part of the sysadmin group, and for the hosts, which are part of the a uh, web servers group, okay? And that's, that's what you are supposed to do. Um, there is a testing mechanism available here as well. Huh? So as you can see, IPA, HVAC test, huh? that, that, can, that tool, or actually this command can be used to test out if the rule is working. Just to give you an idea, if I disable the default rule again, and now, as I told you earlier, no access is possible from any user to any host. Let's say I test if I can connect as user, let's say Bob, to the client machine via SSH. That should not work because of the disabled allow rule. If I enable the rule again, and run the same command again, this time it should work. Uh, access grant, granted true. Uh, so, and the same command can also be used later on if you have your, your proper rule to only allow access to the SSH uh, daemon. Uh, this command can be used then again. Okay, so, uh, I would say give it a try. Go through the module, <coughs> and uh, Make sure all the necessary groups are in place um, before you set up the rule. So make sure you have the host group available, and make sure you have the user group available, and then set up the, the rule set. Okay.
No, it's not working. But we, we had the same problem yesterday as well. So some of those sticks, they were completely damaged. So it's in the free IPA subfolder. Okay. This is a slide deck. This is a vagrant box, and this is the uh, this is a. If you drag open the multiple sticks, you can go by 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 by. It's actually the file. It's the blank. Yes. Sorry, say it again. It's quite open the HTML file. If you open it, it's full of the same data. Oh well, it takes some time to swing, so it's <laughs> human. to the USB stick. Ah. Okay, so this one should, should work. Should I uh, copy the file on your stick as well? Okay. It's, it's also part of the document here, if you scroll down. Um, yeah, it's part of the document.
last module. So if you create Alice, for example, and you put Alice in the group, which is not on Jackson, then um, you would have access to it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 So let me let me give you an example how it should look like. So um, the first task was to set up a, a host group called web servers, right? So IPA uh, um, host group at web servers. So the host group has been created. The second task was to add a member. If you don't know which option is necessary in order to add a member to the group, just one dash dash help. And then you see the option is called hosts. Can you see that or should I scroll up? It's okay? Okay. So and we wanted to add the client uh, IPA demo localhost uh, to the group. And that is, that is the necessary option. Uh, so first create the group and then add a member to the group. You could also add um, multiple hosts at the same time um, but since we only wanted to add the client host, I just used this one. Okay, so this was the first task. Then in the next uh, task, you were asked to, um, to disable the default uh, host based access control rule. Disable allow all. Well, it's disabled now. So, and then the task was to set up a new host based access control rule, which is called sysadmin web servers. Mm -hmm. So, the rule is now in place. And now the thing is that you have to assign a host group to this rule set, uh, a user group to this rule set, and also services. To this rule set, and that's what you are, what you have been asked to do in the next step. Um, so the host group web servers—that's the one we just created. So that should work. Okay. So one member has been added to the group. So the next command is to assign the sysadmin group to the sysadmin web servers rule set. This will probably not work on my box because I don't have the sysadmin group available. So that means I have to create the group first. Um, sysadmin, yeah, sysadmin. So now it's, it's there. I want to add a member to the group. I want to add Alice to the sysadmin group. Oh, I don't have the user account there, so I have to create it. So now the user account is there. I, I give a password to the account. So, and now I can add Alice to the group. Okay, so, and now, that was, that was the main idea. I have to assign the sysadmin group to the, to the rule set, which is working okay now. So, and at this point in time, we have the web server group assigned to the rule set, we have the user group assigned to the rule set. What is missing? Service. The services, exactly. No? And here we said we wanna allow all services,
so which uh, worked as well. And as I said earlier, you could limit this, uh, this to, to specific services. In this case, I just say access is allowed to all services as long as the user who is trying to connect is part of the sysadmin group and as long as the user who tries to connect and uh, who is part of the sysadmin group tries to connect to a host which is a member of the web service group. Okay? So at this point in time, it's only the, the, the client host. So, and this uh, should uh, theoretically work now. Let's give it a try. Um, first of all, <clears throat> let's use uh, the test program I used earlier as well. Oh, maybe first of all, make sure the HVAC rule, the default rule is indeed uh, disabled. Uh, yeah, it's disabled, and you can see we now have a second rule set available here as well, no? the one we, we just created. Oh, which one? So the default rule is disabled, this one should be, should be enabled. Okay. Um, so, and now let's do the test. So we test the connection from, or actually to, the client IPA demo local box via SSH for the user Bob. This should uh, not work no? because Bob is not a member of the group. When we try for Alice, this should work. No? Access granted. No? We can give it a try. Let's say we authenticate as, as Bob in the first step and try to connect as, as Bob to the client. Does not work. Now let's authenticate as Alice. Oh, I have to change the password. Uh, uh. Um, so let's try again as Alice after I change the password. This uh, should work. Uh, why is it taking so long? Uh, something seems to be wrong. Let's. Ah, now it's connected. Okay, it, it, it took a while for some reason. Um, might be worse to, to investigate why, why it took so long, but um, yeah. I think here we, we don't have the time for, for it. But as you can see, Alice is now, now connected to the box. Uh, automatically via cables. And this, this works. Okay, um, so... Just to be sure, I am not running into any other problems during the workshop. I just enable the default rule set again. Uh, as admin, of course. Okay. So this was our module, which one was it? Module four. Any questions? It's it's pretty st straightforward. So if you are if you are used to the to the environment and um, have an idea how the command should look like, uh, then 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 it's 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 really easy. At the moment, it might look a little bit complex, but uh, as I said, uh, if you get used to it, then it's it's really easy. And of course, make sure you have command line completion enabled. That definitely helps. Most important part for me is uh, the conditions are end conditions. They're not or the user must have be member of the group, uh, the, the user group and the uh, host group. Uh, 
What what do you mean exactly? Like so the user now has the to be in the H three group. Yeah. The conditions that you set. Yeah. The user groups and the host groups. Yeah. Both must apply. All must apply. Yeah, that that's true. Huh? So you have to be a member of the group and you have to connect uh, to the to the to one of the hosts specified in the host group. Otherwise, uh, the the access won't won't work. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so then. Uh, Oh, by the way, uh, do we have a break? No. Okay. Yesterday we had one. <laughs> you, do you guys want to have a break? Uh, no. Okay. Then we just. The module. Then we we just continue with the module five. So module five now is about um, setting up a web server and uh, creating a service principle for this web server. You know, in IPA. It's mostly about Kerberos, right? And when we talk about Kerberos, um, we also have to talk about Kerberos principles. No? So Kerberos principles are stored in a, in a principle database. And um, as you have seen earlier, when I created a, a user account, a principle automatically, a Kerberos principle has been created automatically for the, for the user account I, I, I create. So uh, this is... a a different when we talk about services. No? So if you want to configure a Kerberos-based authentication on a specific service, in this case it's a web server, you have to create a, a principle for the service uh, manually. No? So that means you have to tell IPA you now want to run a web server, you want to enable a Kerberos-based authentication on this web server, and uh, in order to make that work, you have to set up a Kerberos principle for the web server. And um, yeah, that's uh, what is described in, in this module. No? So basically, you first have to, to, to set up the principle just by running IPA service at, and then the service name, or actually not the service name, it's, it's a principle name. So you, you specify the service, slash, and then the host name where the service actually runs on. No? So this is the service, that, that is the host where the service runs. Um, it, it's important to understand that you can only create a, uh, a Kerberos um, principle for a service uh, which uh, exists on a host which is part of the free IPA domain. So this host has to be part of the IPA domain, so it has to, uh, has to have a Kerberos principle, otherwise it would not work to add a service principle for a service which is supposed to run on the specific host. Okay? So, and then, uh, of course, if you've created the service principle, uh, no, let me, let me rephrase. The service principle is, is part of the IPA framework in order to, um, to uh, make use uh, out of it on the uh, host where the, where the Apache service runs, you have to retrieve the principle from the IPA server to the machine where the service runs. No? So in our case, that's the client machine. So and there's also a quite convenient command available to do that. It's called IPA get key tab. No? Um, you specify the IPA server and the name of the Kerberos principle and the name of the local file where you want to store the principle in. No? That's usually, uh, so this file is usually, usually called a, a key tab file. Um, no? So, and then the client talks to the server, retrieves the, the service principle and stores it in, in this file. And that's basically it from an IPA point of, of view. The, the next steps are just the configuration of Apache. No? So you have to make sure the key tab file uh, is available in the location Apache uh, has access to. You have um, to make sure that the, that the Apache service uh, uh, actually can access the file. So you have to assign the proper um, user and, and group permissions. And in case um, you have SE Linux enabled, which is of course always the case, uh, then you have to make sure the file also has a proper SE Linux context. So, and then you have to configure Apache. So we have a, on, 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 on your client box, Apache is already in, installed. Um, 
there was also a little application available on this box called app.py. And if you execute this application uh, uh, on, the, on the host, on the, on the Apache host, so actually if you call the URL to execute the application, it requires a valid login. So you have to log in as some user, Alice or Bob, and when you then execute the application in the web browser, you see as which user you are actually logged in. Huh? So that's the purpose of the, of the application. If you are not logged in via Kerberos, uh, the application won't work. No? So you do not have access to the application uh, when you do not have a valid Kerberos uh, ticket available. Mm -hmm. So, and the whole configuration is done uh, in, a, in a config file called uh, app.conf, which is also already available on your, on your client box. You only have to add this part here. So you have to point the web server to the keypad file, which has been uh, downloaded earlier, or actually created earlier, based on the Kerberos principle. Uh, here you define that, what I just said, no, that you have uh, to have a valid Canvas ticket in order to access the application, and that's actually the file that is being executed. But that's already part of the configuration file, so the only thing you have to add is this part here. So then you can uh, restart the server, you can authenticate as some, uh, as some user you, you created earlier, Bob or Alice, it, it doesn't matter, and then you can... Um, use a command line tool like curl, for example, to, um, to execute the application, and then you should see something like, like this. No? So you should see that you are actually logged in as, uh, as Bob. So there's a request variable, which is a set. So request user variable, it's actually called, uh, sorry, remote user variable, and that, that that's the one that is used by the application to show which user is currently talking to the service. Um, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do in this module now. No? So, create a service, retrieve the, just a second, retrieve the key type file from the server to the client, customize the existing Apache configuration, restart Apache and run curl, to execute that. You had a question? Yeah, I guess uh, when I run the IPA get keypad command, mm -hmm. the page becomes the file printed and then Okay, let's have a look.
IPA, client installed. Did you export it? Yeah, thank
since the IPA server should be the DNS for the whole environment, the client should have set it up. Okay, so probably something went wrong there. So we have only 15, 15? 15 minutes left, yeah. Um, so I would say we continue with the module six and um, I will also talk briefly about module seven and module eight and then I leave it up to you which exercises you want to complete here in the workshop, okay? So just that you have an idea about the topics which are, uh, which are um, discussed here in the, in the different modules. Huh? Um, so the last module, was that, was that working okay for you, for most of you? Yeah? Okay, good. So module six is about certificate management. This is also uh, quite important and interesting because uh, I, I, I mentioned a couple of times already that uh, IPA comes with an with a internal certificate authority system which is able to issue certificates for hosts, for services, and um, also for, for users with, with the last releases. No? So in the last releases, we add um, the feature of uh, certificate profiles and with the profiles, you are now able to uh, issue certificates for, for various kind of, of, of setups. Yeah? Okay, so um, the idea in this module here is that you request a service certificate for the web server you set up in the last module. Yeah? Um, so this was, or actually this is the service principle, so the service Kevos principle you configured in the last module. It should have a keypad. Um, it's, it's running on the, on the client IPA demo local system. And in the next step, you are enabling CertMonger. CertMonger is actually a client application which uh, helps to make sure that if a certificate which is going to, so which has been released and which is going to expire, um, that this certificate is renewed automatically you know, before, before it expires. And it can, it can also be used to, to request the actual certificate. You know? So there is no need uh, for you that, you that you do the request manually, so this can all be done with the help of, of CertMonger. Cameron, should we, should we do that later, later on? Okay. So, and um, as I just said, you can you can use CertMonger for this, and um, this is the command line which which can be used. So you can just say IPA get third request 
uh, the, the NSS database where you want to store the certificate key and the actual certificate, uh, a, a name of the certificate, so that is just a nickname, and for which uh, service principle you want to want to request the actual certificate. Um, maybe one more note about this. So, you know, when it comes to certificate management, you can either set up PEM-based certificates, so those are, or those certificates are usually stored in, in plain text files, which are base 64 encoded. Uh, or you can say you want to uh, you want to use a, a, a NSS database and store the certificate and the actual key, and, and the key which belongs to the certificate in the NSS database. And that's the case here in the example. Right? Instead of instead of using uh, plain text files, <coughs> I just say Apache is already using an NSS database, so why not just store the new certificate in this NSS database, and that's what I what I say here. No? So this is a location where this database is uh, is uh, stored. This is a nickname, and I want to have a certificate for this service principle. And then a uh, request is is uh, issued, and you should have a if everything worked well, you should receive. A certificate back from the from the doc tag instance, uh, which is part of the I IPA framework. No? So it says that's the location where the certificate is stored. It has been issued by the certificate authority, and here was the here's the expiration date when the when the certificate expires. No? So just to give you an idea how it might look like. So this is. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, I think I did not create it. Uh, service at so. so this is um, this is the uh, actual ser service. So I enable certmonger. So it's, it's, it's running. And now what I do is I just request a certificate for the service. So a, a sign, um, sign request has been, has been issued. What? Uh, just a second. Ah. Okay, I'm I'm logged in as 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 vagrant user. That that's why why it failed. So this is a uh, this is a signing request, uh, but it failed because my web server is not configured properly. Okay. If I would have done that. You would see a request like 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 this. Okay, if you do that on your machines, it will definitely work. Yeah? So, and if you want to look at the certificate that has been released, um, it might look like like this. No? So you can use the cert util command, which is part of the NSS utilities. Um, you can specify the folder. Uh, where the uh, so, uh, where this NSS database is, is stored, and then you can say dash l without any further options. It would show you a list of all the certificates which are stored in the database here. And if you pass the dash n option and the nickname, uh, then you only see this specific certificate here. No? So you see the serial number, which the A ha um, has issued the, the certificate, expiration date, all the things I just mentioned. No. Um, so, and then you have the certificate available and you can reconfigure Apache to, to, to <coughs> use this, this certificate. No? So it's, it's really co convenient no, to use CertMonger for this. Um, of course, here we just use very basic, a very basic example. No? So we just 
specified for which, for which service we want to have a certificate. You, can, you could also add a lot of different options as well. Right? So you could specify, for example, for which, which extensions you want to use in the X509 certificate. You can set up um, uh, additional DNS names. Um, all the things that can be stored uh, inside of X509 certificate for all those things uh, option is available with cert cert mongers. No? So here, this is really just a very, very basic example. Okay. So, it's definitely worth to, to spend some more time on, on, this, on this if you're interested in this later on, maybe. So, replica uh, installation, that is module 7. Um, replica installation, that, that means that you just replicate your existing free IPA server onto, a, onto another box. No? So in, in practice, it, it actually means that you have a second IPA server available. No? So um, this is good, for example, for, for, for load balancing. No? If you have a lot of load, then it makes sense to distribute the load across different machines or for um, high availability, you know? so if one server goes down, then you still have another one which is available. Um, it definitely makes sense to have, have different replicas available, no? especially if you have um, multiple geos, for example, as well, no? so then it, it, it makes sense to have a replica available in, in every geo where you m might have some, some offices and so on and so forth. No? So, um, the installation again, it, it's really easy. So what you have to do on the main server, you have to, to prepare the replica setup just by running IPA, replica prepare, IP address of the replica, the name of the replica. Uh, then you are asked for the directory manager password. It retrieves some information out of the, uh, out of the LDAP tree and then it creates a replica file, this one here. And this one is uh, actually required on the replica system. So you have to copy it over from the master to the replica. And then you run rep uh, IPA replica install and pass the, the file name you just created on the master to the tool. And then it's more or less uh, the same like on the master server. No? So the installation starts and it sets up all the necessary services and after a while the replica has been set up. No? And you have already replication configured at this point in time between the master and the replica system. No? So actually it's, since all the data is stored in LDAP, uh, a replication between the two LDAP servers so on the master and on the replica has been configured and the replication is running already at this point in time. Um, yeah, that's the replica. So the last module um, here is um, SSH keys. That's also a quite interesting feature. You know, when you have SSH keys available for users or for, for, for hosts, those are usually stored in, in, in local files. No? So for users, you have an authorized keys file. For hosts, you have a known host file. And it's always a mess if you have a large environment and you ha have to copy those files around. No? And here it is really easy to store those files in IPA. No? So IPA can be used as a kind of a back-end store for public uh, user keys and also for the public uh, host keys. No? So to give you an idea, uh, if you create a key pair for a user, in this case it's, it's Alice, you can just modify the user entry from Alice and add the key that has been stored in the, in the, in the local file uh, to the user entry. Uh, so you can just uh, 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 copy and paste the key from the, from the local file, run IPA user mod Alice uh, and pass the option dash dash SSH uh, pub key with the content of the key. Uh, and then the, st uh, the, the file is stored on, on, on IPA. Um, so, and during the setup of a client, um, <coughs> of a client, 
um, the server, or the SSH server, already has been configured to look up IPA in order to verify the SSH key when the SSH key is used for authentication. So it's, it's not uh, checking uh, the local authorized keys file anymore, the SSH daemon. Instead, it's asking IPA if the user uh, who is currently trying to log in um, uh, has a valid key available. No? So, and it talks to IPA. So this is actually done by a little, little proxy application, which is part of the IPA uh, sorry, of the uh, open uh, SSH uh, server configuration. So if you look it up. Uh, yeah, so there's a little little script here at the end of the configuration, which is, um, so the, the, com uh, the option which is used is called authorized uh, keys command. And this is a script which comes uh, uh, with the framework and which uh, tells, SS, uh, tells uh, the SSH server to please talk to the IPA server in order to look up the key instead of looking into the local authorized keys file. And that's quite convenient. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, if you want to verify this, if you've uploaded the key, just make sure that you disable uh, Kerberos authentication because if you have a valid Kerberos ticket already, if you t when you test it, uh, it first tries to log in via Kerberos. So you have to make sure you disable Kerberos during the SSH. Um, no, this is a necessary command or option actually. And then you can log in to, the ser to a different server and to verify that, in, that really the public key has been used, you can look up the log file and you should see something like, like this in the log. No? So that the authentication is based on a public key and is not based on, on, on GSS RP. No? And the same is actually true for, for host keys as, as well. No? So instead of uh, only uploading user keys, you can also upload uh, host keys and then uh, the uh, uh, SSH uh, the SSH uh, client is also automatically configured uh, to look up uh, IPA instead of looking into the, into the known host file to verify if a host is uh, known and trusted or uh, if it's not trusted and known. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, basically it. Uh, I think we are already out of time, at least for a minute. Um, Questions? Do we still have a few minutes for, for questions? Okay. Maybe one question if there were if there was any. No questions? Okay. Cool. Okay then, thank you very much and um, <laughs> have fun with uh, IPA. Yeah, also please keep in mind that you can rate this workshop. On the, on the pages of the Lentons, or we have the mobile application. Mm -hmm. And we are also still looking uh, for, 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 okay. for the live stream code for your proposal, I will copy it over. or we can go okay. for the existing one. Thank you. Yeah, and we would like to kindly ask you for the recording of those USB sticks if you have it. The one we provided to you here. Thanks. Can I have a little bit out of topic question? <laughs> Just give me a second yeah. so that I can uh, start the copy. <laughs> Do you have any recommendation how to 
to solve this with IPA to do what to make uh, some some kind of active directory for Windows. Ah, okay. So that's not possible at this point in time. So you can't. No, no. Yeah. So that so it, it's in the work. So what is actually missing? So that um, uh, that also. Um, so that you can can uh, kind kind of build up a Active Directory server with IPA, you need a component which is actually called a global catalog server, right? So this is a global catalog server. So this is a component which is always available in AD domains, and this one is actually not available at the moment on the IDM side and that's why you cannot set up something like, like this with, with IPA. But it's it's in the works as I said. So it's 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 coming. It's coming. It's coming, yeah. So I will wait. <laughs> okay, cool. So it's it's still zinking. It it takes a while. Okay. Can I keep it because I'm not sure whether I will be able to copy if you are not the same Uh I would have Yeah, one uh, we would like to get it back. Okay. Because it will be used also for other workshops. Okay. But you are fine. Uh, or if you have a service that is later. Yeah. Today. Okay. We can do that as well. Also really slow, no? so when you copy a f uh, like yeah. 500 Mac file, it takes like 10 minutes. No? Yeah, it's fine. Well, if you have a then it's fine. Okay. Took me two hours. Yeah. And eventually the, the dot box file it's also blocking. So uh, what is blocking? The dot box file. It's okay. like a lib some box file. Okay. It's also blocking. So you cannot. Add that to the so I will okay. directly from your I can, Yeah, you can download it from my, from my laptop. Apparently, the USB sticks are really somehow, somehow broken. Uh, I can give you the file. Okay. Yeah. It's still uh, thinking. What? Maybe you can just take the, the the stick with you and pass it back later on. Well, yeah. So was it working then on, on their box? So it got to just start the because it was a little bit noisy and that's, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I have, I have, uh, we have restarted HTTPD. Okay. It was as a broadcast the main DNS population. And afterwards it was working? After restarting HTTPD it was working. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay, here it is. Because Sebastian, can you press verify a lot? It was I think it was Yeah, me too, but uh, it was actually the way around. <laughs> I have one to go. Okay, I think I have a No. Okay. 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 Okay.
to answer some of your questions mm -hmm. if you feel mm -hmm. such happy. So please do. Okay. You can give up your first card. Awesome. We also have a Raspberry yeah. Pi to sorry? We also have a Raspberry oh, Pi yeah, yeah. to give. Really? Yeah. So that yeah, uh, so encourage Are you the new photographer? No, I just take the stuff because I want to enter I don't want to give it. <laughs> Uh, to connect in, in the networks, the, is there two cables available or is this? Uh, oh, you say I think there's, there's only there. one. I won't need the cable, I just need the output. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'll, I'll get the network. There's a reduction to the network. I don't know. HDMI? Do you need it? No, no, no. Oops. No, I just, just need that. And VJ plus one. One in it. Hey George, here, pal. Hey, hey. Long time yeah. how are you? Yeah. <laughs> are you attending the fourth lab? Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, cool, awesome. I was uh, at Kunz uh, last year. So okay, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, me neither. Is he? Yeah.